you about you know the G20 being having this 20 largest economies and uh, so will the new delhi meeting reposition finance infrastructure uh, frameworks to stimulate global growth or like in the past is it going to be for the growth of just a few well uh, first of all smita good to talk to you and uh, as you can see this is like the home stretch uh, you know everything is getting ready the negotiators are negotiating the people who are trying to get the arrangements done are working at it so so it's really at this moment uh, uh, very very focused time for us uh, but still i i think it's important uh, people have a sense of what is going on uh, and uh, uh, my uh, reading right now of the g20 is that uh, there are a whole lot of issues some are longer term structural meaning that uh, they have been discussed before including at earlier g20s some are more emergent they they are issues of the last year maybe the last two three years uh, which have again come to head whose whose uh, uh, stress impact uh, on countries uh, is is very high so you're going to get really a mix of issues uh, that the world is looking at uh, and a lot of this uh, the burden is on the global south uh, on developing countries uh, so uh, one very important message for us is focus on the global south but uh, there is a larger context the context is of a very turbulent global environment you know the impact of the covid uh, impact of the ukraine conflict mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues like debt which have carried on for some time uh, and and by the way in, uh, you know climate disruptions which are today affecting the economy as well uh, i'll come to global south because you spoke about that post brics also sure. uh, i'll come on that but uh, first i'd like to ask about whether uh, you know the the fact that president putin and president xi are not going to be uh, present at the new delhi meet uh, is that has that cast a shadow on the uh, summit not really i mean look uh, i think uh, at different points of time in g20 you know there have been some presidents or prime ministers who for whatever reason mm -hmm. have chosen not to come themselves uh, but you know that country and that country's position uh, is obviously reflected by whoever is the uh, representative uh, on on uh, that occasion mm -hmm. uh, so you you had you know some occasions where you had uh, you know a president or two sometimes three uh, who who have not uh, uh, themselves come but i i do think you know my my sense from talking to the ministers certainly and i know the sherpas are in touch with each other they are right now uh, trying to hammer out the final uh, document i think everybody is coming with a great deal of seriousness i mean they but will it have an impact on the outcome uh, of the meet i would put it this way that uh, the uh, you know uh, the issues are there uh, these are not issues that are this morning being taken up i mean there's a whole gestation period of 8 9 months where at different levels mm -hmm. ministers or officials have tried to progress an issue so this is like a culmination mm -hmm. you know these are uh, these are really about uh, 16 18 processes which are all coming together to be stitched up together to to produce a summit uh, so outside. russia and china not really miffed with india and is that the reason no no no, no. I, i i don't i don't think it has anything to do with india i mean i i think whatever decision they make i mean they would know best but uh, uh, i i would not at all see it the way uh, you would suggest and it's not going to have an impact on the de the declaration itself is a is a complicated procedure to arrive at a consensus to have a declaration so uh, are we moving towards it are the countries moving towards that and well we are negotiating right now as as i said the negotiation uh, is not uh, uh, the clock did not start ticking yesterday the clock has been ticking for some time mm -hmm. so typically what happens is there's a ministerial meeting then the ministerial meeting produces outcomes i'll i'll give you an example okay uh, i chaired the development ministers meeting okay so when i we did the development ministers meeting uh, there was 
uh, and agreed all 20 countries agreed that there should be an action plan to speed up the sustainable development goals achievement uh, they all 20 countries agreed that we should have high principles for uh, environmentally friendly lifestyle hmm? so now if these have been already approved uh, either they get attached or some part of it in some summary form comes into the document so everyone you know the labor the the education the fi the finance is a very very important track I mean, correct that's a very crucial track because in a way that's where the whole thing began the g20 exercise began so every track uh, feeds in outcomes these are uh, some of them have multiple meetings like finance some of them have a uh, single meeting so these outcomes are melded together uh, and they produce a composite document in addition there are things which may be uh, discussed among the sherpas or the leaders may also discuss some things among themselves these meetings have been going on since the beginning of this year right. but uh, is there a consensus building and what will india see as as the host what will india see as a win win situation well i i don't think it's just a matter of india seeing something uh, uh, today, uh, the the expectations of the world uh, uh, are are uh, very uh, high in terms of uh, what the G20 uh, is able to produce, and produce in terms of meeting the challenges of the world. So, if you were to go to Africa, we go to Latin America, go to parts of Asia, go to the Caribbean, go to the Pacific. Everybody is today saying, "Okay, I have a certain set of issues." You know, I have a debt problem, I have a trade problem, I have a health access problem, I have a green uh, development resourcing problem. So what will the G20 do for me? So the world is waiting. So the world is waiting uh, or today I see it more uh, for India as a responsibility. That we have the responsibility today in a very difficult world. You know. It is difficult in terms of the COVID impact, difficult in terms of the conflict impact, in terms of the climate impact, in terms of debt. That's one part of it. But it's also difficult politically. There is a very sharp north-south divide. There's an even sharper east-west polarization. So how do you bring people together? How do you find common ground? How do you, how do you make everybody understand that we all have a bigger responsibility? Mm. And, and therefore, please, you know can we can we kind of get our act together here and and uh, do what is right by the world as a former diplomat and now as an external affairs minister i guess that's right up your alley to find common ground well i uh, you know i everybody's wor worked and is working on it you know uh, there's a you know every minister we, we have uh, about 15 ministerial tracks every minister has put in the best the sherpa and his team have worked and are working very hard so it's a, it's a it's a collective yeah. effort sure. right you you've just come back from BRICS yeah. you're heading uh, for the ASEAN summit East Asia this summit evening. yeah so f that's the East Asia summit and then is the G20 it's a it's a packed schedule you spoke about global south you spoke about the divide between the east and west between the north and south uh, and trying to find common ground do these countries see India as a voice you said represent the global south do it does do these countries who are participating in these uh, fora do they see india as a credible voice within the fora uh, the global south countries right. the yes, uh, yes. Uh, i mean um, i w i would certainly hope so for this reason uh, there have been g20 summits before no other g20 presidency made an effort to get together the developing countries who are not on the table and say please come sit with us tell us what are your concerns and we will distill those concerns and place it before the G20 that's a very unique exercise nobody has done it before mm. so if we have taken the trouble and we meaning here Prime Minister Modi himself mm. you know if 125 countries have been consulted feel today yes what we told India India has promised us that they will put that issue on the table. I think they have a lot of expectation of India. Uh, and the, as far as the rest of the G20 is concerned, they know that, look, we have always in G20, outside the G20, India has a reputation of being a very constructive player, uh, you know, someone who bridges divides, who kind of somewhere 
helps to fix uh, problems. So, so the there's a there's a lot of goodwill that we have, and uh, and again, uh, I I stress to you, I I'm confident that every one of the G20 coming to Delhi will understand the responsibility that they bear, will understand today that the other 180 countries of the world are looking to them to set directions uh, and that they cannot afford to fail them. Do these countries at any point of time feel that India has shifted its position, is leaning more towards the US than it used to? I know I sound like a dinosaur, but let me hark back on the non-aligned movement uh, period when we were considered absolutely, uh, you know, n not leaning and if at all leaning then more towards the Soviet bloc, the former Soviet bloc. Do they see us leaning more towards the US now? No, I, I hate to confirm to you that you are being old fashioned here. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it is it's really I think a uh, very uh, anachronistic way of looking at the world today. I think a lot of countries identify with India uh, as a developing country. A lot of countries identify with India uh, as a democracy. Many mm -hmm. identify with India saying okay you know it is a pluralistic country we see many uh, institutional cultural similarities. So, different people in the world identify uh, with us. But do understand this point. Uh, G20 is not the arena for power politics. You know, I, I accept, I am very, very conscious that uh, diplomacy and international relations is a very competitive exercise. But even in diplomacy, there are occasions when you are competitive, there are occasions when you are cooperative. G20 is very much a collaborative forum. It is even countries who differ profoundly on many other issues, but their history if you look at it in G20 is to find something which which uh, brings them together. So, we are trying to develop an agenda mm. that if you if you look at you know at uh, resources for green development for example, if you look at uh, dealing with sustainable growth, if you are looking at plastics, if you are looking at biofuels, if you are looking at uh, educational access at nutrition. Uh, these should not be and I do not think these are political issues. So, what India's strategic calculations and adjustments may be I think is a different subject. Hmm. But you know uh, I have covered G20s earlier and whenever there is a summit meeting the presence of the American president kind of overshadows uh, the other heads of state and uh, it can be something very small like the cavalcade going and then everybody is made to wait for the US president to go forward. So, uh, do you think that the fact that uh, President Biden is going to be here for three days in India, is that going to impact on uh, the other countries feeling that India as a host country is again paying too much attention? No, I look, I, I, I just think you are going on a wrong track here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you will see that uh, everybody will come in smoothly, nobody will have to wait for anybody else. Uh, that uh, you know for us the G20 is a collective exercise we will deal with it uh, in that collective right? it is not just the bandobast I am talking we, about. We are, look, we are India you know we are India we know how to handle the world right. and believe me especially in the last 10 years we have shown how we can handle the world. Uh, I will also ask you whether you know we were talking about the declaration and uh, the Russian foreign minister was pretty, pretty belligerent saying that uh, they wanted their view on the Ukraine crisis to be included in the declaration. Uh, do not you see that that muscle flexing has begun even before the summit? Uh, well, uh, that may be the way you would characterize it. I mean for me, uh, uh, anybody uh, would try to put across their national position, try to maximize their negotiating position if you would. I, I think you should wait and see what actually happens in the negotiation not prejudge it uh, purely in terms of what may be said on one occasion and what may be the media interpretation of what was said uh, mm -hmm. on one occasion. Um, President Biden's visit what uh, on the bilateral level what is going to be on the table if you could tell us because there is talk about nuclear reactors, visa issues coming up, what could be uh, on the agenda? Well, uh, you know we have had a, a very strong uh, state visit by uh, uh, the Prime Minister to the United States strong in terms of the outcomes and the uh, results of that visit. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, my understanding is right now uh, uh, both systems, the Indian system and the American system is busy working that through and trying to implement a lot of what was agreed to uh, in June uh, this year. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, this would give uh, an occasion for the leaders to uh, take stock. Um, post COVID and post Ukraine conflict, uh, foreign policy analysts feel that there is this arc uh, of cooperation and arc of uh, alliance between Russia and China and uh, that influences most for us, whether it was at the BRICS, we talked, you heard about de-dollarization and stuff like that coming out. And uh, do you think that that will cast a shadow on all these international meets? No, I look, I think often arguments can be overstated, sometimes deliberately so for a purpose. Okay. Uh, since you refer to BRICS, let me give you the example of BRICS. Uh, we had the five BRICS members, a perfectly congenial, uh, obviously a very detailed exchange about what, you know, how to take BRICS forward, of which membership expansion was one. Uh, and uh, the, even when you speak about currency, frankly, the, a lot of the focus was really about how to use our national currencies, uh, which many of us want to do and are capable of doing today. We may not have been uh, in that situation, uh, uh, you know, a decade ago. Uh, so, uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, do, do not uh, see terms, uh, see the world very starkly in terms of black and white and, you know, this camp and that camp. I am not saying that countries do not have their partialities and their relationships. They do. Uh, but I think the world is a much more nuanced uh, place, it is much more multipolar, there are many more variables, uh, you know, a, a large part even say again in BRICS would have been, you know, what are the views of a South Africa, what does a Brazil think, how, uh, you know, where is India going and then you find some kind of uh, landing point. I mean, if you look uh, even at last year's BRICS, I mean, uh, you, uh, uh, you know, there were a whole lot of countries you can broadly call them countries in the middle, you know, an Indonesia, an India, a Turkey, a South Africa, a Brazil, uh, a Saudi Arabia, who, who all had their views and did what they could really to arrive at a consensus and I think… Uh, to what uh, do you attribute this, uh, this change, uh, you know, where, where you are saying that it's, there is multipolarity uh, and there is, they are finding a voice to speak in spite and it is not stark like what you are saying? Because I think over the last many years, especially maybe over the last decade, perhaps a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, the relative economic weight of countries have ch changed. Mm. Uh, the, uh, the relative political confidence of countries have changed. Uh, the uh, relationships, uh, uh, especially of the major powers and the middle powers has changed. So, uh, so if you looked at it earlier on, it was like very tight groupings and, uh, you know, uh, let us say, particularly in the Western world, a very strong alliance structure. Today, I think the world architecture has opened out very much more. So, you have many more independent uh, countries, they could be independent at a global level or a regional level or even in the neighborhood level. Uh, I think the world is changing and the G20 itself is a is a is actually the best statement of it uh -huh. that uh, what you know there was a time after all we left everything to the g7 today the fact that you have g20 i mean g20 is today seen as the premier global forum you know after all just think in the last year compare the g20 meeting to anything else you know which has happened a nato meeting um, I do not know, a SCO meeting, a BRICS meeting, a Quad meeting, a UN meeting. Nothing has evoked the kind of attention and focus that a G20 meeting has. Because